So let's begin today with a little bit of a recap of last time. So last time we see that we looked at after the enlightenment. And we see that what happens is initially the Buddha was hesitant in order to explain to the world the whole truth that he had realized. But then there was one person who somehow is able to convince him that he indeed needs to do this and we see that because of that Buddha then embraces his role as a teacher, okay, as a vocation, as a teacher. Now who was that person? You had? Brahman Sampati Sahampati Okay, then what was the imagery that was used? Okay, so you had the imagery of the lotus that was used, lotus pond and therefore with this we see that the Buddha then embraces his vocation as a teacher. Now after this we see that he has an encounter with the five ascetics, right? Now what happens with this encounter? Do they, what is their attitude in the beginning? So doubt and then they also say that, see, you have not followed any of the traditional practices that was being followed in the past and still you say that you have achieved enlightenment. And it is only then, then where the Buddha tells them what has actually happened. So we see that he asks them, do you realize that have I spoken anything like this before? Okay, and in a way we see that they were impressed by the straightforward straightforward attitude of the Buddha and in this way they in a way admit that he indeed had attained enlightenment. So we see that they were convinced now and they no longer addressed him as Reverend Gautama. And we see that when Buddha had, Buddha kept on asking them like you know, do you admit that I have never spoken anything like this before and they said, Lord you have not. And with this we see that Buddha now delivered to them the first sermon. And this first sermon is philosophically very rich and enriching. Okay, and today we will take a look at this first sermon of the Buddha. So this first sermon is called as the Dhamma Chaka Pavatana. It is basically in a way, a sermon on the setting in motion of the wheel of truth. Basically means that setting in motion the wheel of the truth. And this was delivered at Isi Patana which is now called as Sarnath. Okay, so basically it's an ancient stupa. which contains a religious relic and it still marks the spot where this event actually occurred. Okay, so let's Thank you. 
The first sermon of the Buddha, known as the Dhammakak Upavatanasutta, marks a pivotal moment in the history of Buddhism. Thus I have heard, the Blessed One was once living in the Deer Park at Isipatana, near Baranasi. There he addressed the group of the five bhikkhus. Bhikkhus, these two extremes ought not to be practiced by one who has gone forth from the household life. What are the two? There is devotion to the indulgence of sense pleasures, which is low, common, the way of ordinary people, unworthy and unprofitable. And there is devotion to self-mortification, which is painful, unworthy and unprofitable. Avoiding both these extremes, the Tathagata has realized the middle path. It gives vision, it gives knowledge, and it leads to calm, to insight, to enlightenment, to nibbana. And what is the middle path? It is simply the noble eightfold path, namely, right view, right thought, right speech, right action, right livelihood, right effort, right mindfulness, right concentration. This is the middle path realized by the Tathagata, which gives vision, which gives knowledge, and which leads to calm, to insight, to enlightenment, to Nibbana. The middle path is the essence of the Buddha's teaching, guiding us away from the extremes of indulgence and self-denial and towards a balanced approach to life. It serves as a practical guide to living a life of wisdom, ethical conduct, and mental discipline. Let the words of the Buddha's first sermon inspire you to seek the middle path in your own life, leading you towards peace, insight, and ultimate enlightenment. So let's take a look at the contents of the first sermon. So, in a way, he says that the two extremes should not be practiced. Okay, so therefore, he proposes the middle path, which we'll be looking in detail today. Similarly, he also says that indulgence of sense pleasures will also in a way lead to suffering. And therefore, that needs to be avoided. Self-mortification in moderation needs to be practiced and therefore you need to take a look and practice the middle path which is also known as the eight fold path. And when we are looking at this, we also need to look at the noble truth of suffering and you have the five aggregates or in Sanskrit which is called as skandhas. So all this will in a way lead us to the understanding of ourselves better according to the Buddha and thus cessation or end of suffering. Yeah, so the skandhas are basically the ways that he has uh, described of how in a way, so it includes physical form, okay, you have sensations, you also have perceptions, okay, then you have the consciousness and the attitude. We will look at this in detail in the following slides. So in brief, this is basically the five kind of realms that we have which in a way lead us to attachment. Okay, so the, uh, these are also called as the skandhas. So we see that the noble eightfold path includes the right view, right thought, right speech, right action, right livelihood, right effort, right mindfulness and right concentration. Okay, so this also we will take a look in detail once we have seen the five aggregates and once we have seen what actually leads to suffering and how we can in a way evade it. So therefore this is something 
which in a way is kind of the final answer towards everything. So, first and foremost, we need to take a look at suffering, okay? And therefore, suffering which also known as Dukha. Now, this basically outlines the pervasive nature of suffering in our existence. And when we look at the noble truth of suffering, we also look at various aspects of suffering in our lives. So, if you just take a look at yourself, okay, go back in time and look at certain events, obviously there would be suffering at one point of, or the other, but they would have been in different forms. Okay, so all suffering is not at the same level, depending on the event, depending on the situation, we tend to get affected in various ways. First and foremost, we see birth. Now, here he says that the process of birth is in a way something that involves both pain and discomfort. Okay, and this is both for the mother as well as for the newborn. I am sure all of you all may have seen either in reality or maybe in films the process of birth giving, the birth pangs etc. So in a way we see that though something that can ultimately it leads to a lot of joy but it the whole process itself does involve pain and discomfort. Next we see that aging, okay, all of us also will go through this as we get older and we see that this also leads to again discomfort and distress. Why is it so? Because as you get older, you realize that you cannot do things as you would do before. Okay? Uh, and sometimes we also see that there is this whole problem of discomfort because we see our physical features changing and that also thus leads to some kind of discomfort. Also, there is the whole problem of mental plus physical decline or deterioration. Okay, see we see some people are so occupied about the loss of hair, some people are worried about weight, okay, because generally they say after 40 people tend to put on weight and you do not know how it comes, okay, so in spite of excesses and all, it happens. Next we see that sickness, okay, also does lead to suffering, okay, and this also can limit one's ability. So you realize that when you are sick, of course you cannot do the things as you were doing before, also, you see that it gives you a lot of discomfort, a lot of suffering and sometimes it could be both physical as well as mental. Next we see that fear of death. Okay, is there anybody in this class who doesn't have fear of death? Okay, so all of us in a way 
are afraid of death basically because of the unknown don't know what will happen and all of us have this urge of living okay and sometimes we see that this urge is something that helps us to bounce back sometimes if you look at various cases people are almost on the verge of death but still they come back they come back stronger because of the will power that is there so we see that death also is suffering and the fear of death as well as the process of death brings suffering to the individual plus persons around now in life we see that sorrow lamentation grief pain are also forms of suffering <coughs> and also we see that hopelessness okay when we lose hope when nothing seems to be going right all that also leads to suffering also we see that association with the unpleasant okay so sometimes we are forced into a situation for example you are not comfortable working with somebody but you see that either in your office or maybe for ministry or somewhere you are put together with that particular person now you see that you can't escape because you also want to maintain your image you don't want to say that i cannot work with this person and at the same time you also have the struggle of finding a bit of discomfort and this also we see that unpleasant experiences can lead to suffering similarly if suppose somebody comments suppose somebody scolds you it's an unpleasant experience which leads to suffering now also we see that this association from the pleasant can also lead to suffering for example you have a mobile which you like a lot you are very much attached to it one day you are going outside on the road on your cycle you happen to fall down fall into a puddle of water okay it gets wet at the circuit board is kind of motherboard is gone and you have to part away with it okay so again this association or separation from something that is pleasant can also lead to suffering breakups also are come in this category also we see that not to get what one wants there is sometimes you want something so badly and the whole process of not able to get that either because it is not possible or either because it is out of our reach okay that also can lead to suffering so if you spend a few moments and look back at your life we see that at least some of these forms of suffering are present and therefore these forms of suffering are present in everyone's life so it is with regard to this we take a look at the five aggregates of attachment which lead to suffering so in this way this leads to form okay which is in a way the physical also we see that you have sensations also you have perception mental formations and consciousness so this emphasizes that suffering 
is imminent. Okay, so we cannot escape it. It is there. Okay, you try to escape from one, you will encounter another. And therefore we see that one must fully understand what it is and what leads to suffering. Only when you recognize the nature, okay, when you identify the nature plus sources of suffering, only then, okay, you can address it, you can deal with it, plus you can overcome it. Okay, just like any kind of physical illness that we have, if you are having some pain, maybe in the chest or in the shoulder, okay, you go, the doctor will run various tests and he will try to identify the source of it. Based on the source, based on the nature, only then once you realize what is the illness, can medication be given. Same thing applies here. Once you identify why this suffering is taking place, what is the source of it, only then can you overcome it and ultimately he says you can get freedom from suffering. Okay, so these five aggregates which are there, which as I said are also called as the five skandhas. These are basically components that are part and parcel of our existence. Okay, so all our experience in a way comes from these five elements and therefore these aggregates are in a way the basis of attachment. Okay, and this attachment is says will lead to suffering. So, how are these aggregates leading to attachment which leads to suffering? Let's take a look at it. So, what is the significance of this? five aggregates. So, in a way, it is important basically with regards to understanding ourself, suffering and as I said earlier, how we can get freedom from suffering. And in a, in a way we see that it is important for us to understand our self. So we see that these five aggregates in a way challenges the notion of a permanent unchanging self. And therefore the basis is that nothing is permanent. Things are subject to change and you need to embrace it or accept it. So first and foremost we see that there is no permanent self. Okay, so what we consider as the self a person, we see that is a collection of changing elements. For example, we see our cells, okay, constantly they are destroyed and new ones are being created. Similarly, even with regards to the hair, okay, every day they say certain amount of hair does fall and new hair takes its place. So therefore, constantly changing elements in various parts of our body, <coughs> okay? And similarly, he also we also look at the impermanence. So 
So everything is in a constant state of flux. Okay, things are constantly changing, things are constantly in a way moving here and there and in this way this reinforces the idea once again that nothing is permanent. For example, we see that our bodies change over time, okay, we gain weight, we become thin, okay, we grow, that is a change. Next, let us take a look at our feelings. Morning when you woke up, you may have been either happy or sad that you had to get up okay then maybe you came across uh, somebody somebody give you some good news once again you feel very happy okay in that happiness you come then something happens again your mood changes so we see that our feelings also are not permanent we experience different feelings or different ways of responding to situation similarly our thoughts are never permanent. For example, our impression about our friends, our impression about uh, the people who we meet also vary based on our experiences. You may have one particular experience in the beginning, later on something bad happens, then you get a dislike towards that person. Or on the other hand, if the person does you a good favor, automatically that love respect increases. So we see that things change, nothing is permanent. So this is the first basic concept that we need to understand. Next, we need to take a look at the concept or the nature of suffering. Because as you see, this ultimately is connected to the attachment. So we see that suffering arises when we are attached. So when we looked at the five aggregates okay, of form, sensation, perceptions, mental form, our thoughts, attitudes and consciousness. So whenever we are attached to any of these things, we see that we are automatically in a way inclining ourselves towards suffering. Now what happens when we are attached to something? When we are attached to something, we consider those objects as permanent. Okay, for example, let's take the example of the phone. When you are so attached to the phone, you feel that the phone is everything for you. You in a way form a permanent bond with it. When it is taken away, it is no longer with you, then you feel the emptiness. Okay, why? Because it is no longer permanent now once it is taken away so whatever you had with the uh, whatever feeling or the bond you had with it is no longer there and therefore we see that being attached is one of the first way how we leads to suffering now you need to understand the impermanence of things or the impermanent nature of these five aggregates okay and it is when you look at this that you are able to understand the root of suffering so as of now we have established one thing nothing is permanent and when we attach ourselves to things to persons okay thinking that they are permanent thinking that they will never change that leads to suffering okay so for example some of some of the people are so much attached to the externals right physical appearance beauty etc as you age once these externals fade away what happens we see that the people also slowly begin to fade. How many of you all have seen the movie Bala? Aishman Kuranas? Okay. Uh, uh, Sean, can you throw some light on it? Do you see any of this happening over there? 
Okay. Now, did you see the ending of the movie? What happened at the end, Austin? Okay, so anybody remembers the ending of the movie when she discovers that he is bald and what does she do? Oh. Prakash? She files a case, right? Saying that in a way he had promised, he is not the same what he had promised. Okay, why? Because her explanation is very important here. Because she says that from the beginning for her what mattered was the externals. Okay, though the love for the person was there, but it was only external. And therefore, when the whole reality changed, okay, when the person now who has hair, who she thought had hair, apparently is bald, we see that again there is this break. Okay, and which ultimately led to suffering. So we see that when we focus on the externals, also when we are too emotionally attached, could in a way lead to suffering or disappointment in other words. Now we see that this analysis of these five aggregates is very important and first and foremost we see that meditation is in a way important because it helps us to observe and understand the aggregates. It helps us to understand that these things are not permanent. In a way, if we are to seek enlightenment, it is important to let go. When we realize the true nature of the aggregates, that they are not permanent, that they are subject to change, automatically we see that it helps us to let go of our attachment, which in a way reduces suffering and can lead to enlightenment or nirvana. And therefore we see that in vipassana, okay, here we see that practitioners are able to observe sensations, thoughts and understand their nature which in a way leads them to a more quieter self. So. What we'll do now is, we'll just do a small exercise, okay, what I want you all to do is, take a comfortable posture, okay, close your eyes, okay, relax yourself, relax your shoulders. And first and foremost now, what you will do is, you will focus on your breath. So pay attention to your breath. Notice the sensation of breath entering through your nostrils. Be aware of it going right through your lungs.
at the same time also observe your other sensations is something scratching or there is some tingling sensation something is warm just become aware of it don't okay don't react to them just become aware of it next also become aware of the thoughts that are going on in your mind but just observe them do not get involved for example if you feel ang if you feel angry notice that there is anger in you but don't try to suppress it don't try to amplify it just become aware or okay, keep bringing your focus back to the present moment okay if your mind wanders if your mind goes outside of your present location come back to where you are if your thoughts are wandering if your mind is going from here and there return bring your attention back to your thoughts to the sensations that you are experiencing and whatever happens do not label do not label whatever is happening as good or bad just become Okay. Okay. Now you may open your eyes. So we see that this is, in short, the vipassana. Now, how many of you have actually done vipassana, the course? Okay. So sometimes you have it for a period of. it is right so we see that vipassana is one of the ways of actually becoming aware of your selves your inner thoughts why we see that it leads to self awareness it helps you become aware of your thoughts feelings emotions bodily sensations next also it helps to keep your emotional balance that is by observing your reactions uh, by observing your emotions without reacting okay you get emotional balance or emotional stability this is also one of the ways to reduce stress just becoming aware not labeling not getting involved with it okay it also leads to insight on the nature of your mind and the impermanence of the world as well as the experiences that we have So in this way we have seen now that first and foremost we have looked at the fact that nothing is permanent then we have seen that our attachment to the things when we make them a permanent aspect of our lives that leads to suffering and finally now we have seen that by meditation by becoming aware of these things we can in a way be on the path to freedom 
Now, also there is the dependent origination. Okay, so the aggregates which in a way tell us that everything is interconnected. Okay, and this in a way arises because the dependence of our body on its parts, our dependence on others and our dependence on situations and other things. And therefore we see that our experiences are an interconnected process. For example, when we look at consciousness, it depends on the physical form okay also it depends on the input that comes from our senses and we say without this input we are not able to be conscious And why are these five aggregates important? We see that these are important first and foremost because to understand the nature of reality. Okay, it pushes us to look beyond what is there, to go beyond, to go beyond superficial appearances and look at the underlying processes that is there. Okay, this is also then important for ethics plus conduct. So when we look at the interconnected nature of our existence, this also leads to compassion It leads to more ethical behavior. Also, it in a way tells us why our selfish desires are not rewarding in the long run. Short term, yes, it may give us a lot of happiness, but in the long run, it in a way doesn't help. And therefore, we see that understanding that our emotions are temporary can in a way reduce are reactive behaviors. It can make us more calmer individuals and therefore we can have a measured response. Okay, so this is basically with regards to how, why the five aggregates are important for us. So in the next class, we'll take a look at these five aggregates, okay, understand them what they are, we already have a brief idea of the different aggregates, okay, so we'll take a look at each one of them in a slight detail and then we'll take a look at the whole aspect of suffering and how we can lead to the First and foremost, awareness and then coming out of it. Okay, so thank you.